James from the Fit RV, and I'm coming at you today with a mod video that's brought to you by our friends at Camping World. Now, Camping World is spending this summer encouraging people to travel different. And one of the ways we travel different is that RVing allows us to travel with this fellow right here, Mel. <laughs> anyway, um, Mel, like anyone else in the RV, has needs. And the needs that we need to be concerned about with Mel are primarily his litter box access. Now, this is a new RV to us, but right after getting it, we realized that there was a way to keep his litter box in an exterior compartment, but still give him access through this vent hole in, uh, in the galley. Hey, buddy. Um, now, Mel has been very compliant about squeezing through that vent hole, but I think we can do a little better. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to enlarge that hole and give him a proper cat door and a way to access his, uh, his litter box. What do you think? Does that sound good to you? <laughs> Weak. There you go. All right, let's do it. All right, so here's the cat door. And uh, I've kind of taken a little look at this before, but we're gonna try to follow the instructions. So step one is measure and mark your cat's shoulder height. Now, I tried that, it didn't go so good. So we're just gonna guess, determine the location for a cat drawer. Draw a vertical line. So basically we're gonna mount this template and figure out where we're gonna cut to make the door bigger. So let's do that. Tracing. All right, we've got it traced. Not too bad. Now, it's very important when you're doing an RV mod, especially where you're gonna be cutting or drilling into the wall, that you know what's on the other side of it. So there could be wires, there could be plumbing, there could be any number of things on the other side that might be a bad idea for you to drill or saw into. In this case, I can see that this is just a 17 millimeter sheet of plywood. I can see all the way through to the back, I know there's nothing back there that I'm going to damage while cutting it. So I'm okay to go ahead and start cutting here. Now, I'm already working with a hole that's been cut out, so things are gonna be a little different for me, but let me show you what you would do if you did not already have a hole. And you would start this by drilling holes here in the corners where they've got it marked on the template. And the reason you do that is so you can get something like a jigsaw or something in there. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use these centers of the holes, and I'm gonna, this is an awl, and I'm just gonna punch right through it to put a little dimple underneath. That's going to show me, now this one's not going to go because it's just in the air because I've already got a hole. Same with that one. Well, maybe I'm catching the corner there. What that's going to show me is where to center a drill bit so that I can make that radius corner. So what I've got here is a half inch brad point drill bit. I'm going to set this little pointy tip into the dimple I just made. And we're going to give it a go. Now here's another tip. It's kind of important not to just push all the way through with the drill because you're going to see the back side of this cabinet and if you just push all the way through it, the drill is going to tear when it comes through on the other side. So you go just far enough until you feel the tip starting to come out. There we go. And then you finish the hole from the other side. That'll give you a cleaner hole on both sides. All right, now, if you had a jigsaw, you could just stick that in there and cut straight. Um, but in this instance, I'm gonna have a little problem when I get down to the bottom because I'm not gonna have room to swing a jigsaw. So I've got a special tool that I'm gonna use to cut the hole out, let me get that ready. So the way this works is you turn it on, the blade will start vibrating back and forth. And then you can just punch it right through. And so that's kind of how I'm gonna go about this. All right. there. 
There, that was a little rough in the corners. So let's see if this door will fit. What do you know? She fits. Yeah, I got room to spare. All right, cool. Put interior frame. Use a screwdriver to drive screws. Okay. And the back side of this, this part, apparently just goes on with double-sided tape. But it's a pretty snug fit, so I'm hoping that that holds. If not, I'll worry about that at a later date. Okay, so let's mark some screw holes and uh, mount up the door. 21. Don't skimp on drilling pilot holes. You might think it's not that important, but especially when you've got something like a hard laminate, even if nothing else, they will keep your drill bit from your screw from skittering about on the surface and, and going somewhere you don't want it. But in this case, it's just a small pilot hole right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one screw in and then we're going to level the door and then I'll drill the other holes. I have lots of screw guns and automatic screwdrivers, but when it comes to something like this where I could crack plastic or strip out a hole, I like to go with the main. This one's from Switzerland. All right. I wasn't kidding. The screwdriver actually did come from Switzerland. We got it, oddly enough, when we were there RVing and I got it to fix something in an RV. So it's earned its place here in our RV. All right, now the outside just goes on with this double-sided foam tape. I'm not so sure how great that's going to work, but we're going to go with it. And if it comes off, I can fix that at a later date. All right. Okay, now I did do one more thing because this is an RV and not a house. In a stationary house, you, you could have been done at just screwing on the door. Um, but since this is an RV, you know, we're gonna be moving up and down the road. And so this door, you know, it's gonna wind up swinging a lot while we're driving and that may eventually squeak or rattle and, and be kind of annoying. So what I've done is I taped a piece of metal in the bottom part of the door and then I've siliconed this magnet in the top part of the door to kind of help keep the door in place because I didn't want, you can lock the door, but I didn't want to lock Mel out of his litter box, right? I'd forget, that'd be a disaster. So hopefully this magnet will keep things stationary while we're underway. Well, the door is installed. Mel doesn't seem too interested in using it. I'm confident he'll get it though because he understands doorknobs. So I'm pretty sure the, oh, maybe he's gonna go. Anyway, I'm pretty sure the flap won't confuse him. We're going to leave it taped open for now because that's sort of what he's used to. And uh, as soon as he's used to this new perimeter on it, we'll, uh, we'll start letting the door hit him and we'll be good to go. It's going to do it for this video. First mod, a cat mod. Done. You know, it's almost like I feel like he's trying to tell me something.